That was Fibonacci to find the big boy. Now, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci was the guy who's credited with these uh, mathematical values, but obviously he didn't create them. He just uh, noticed them in nature, and uh, he's credited with them. Actually, they're divine um, uh, mathematical equations. Anyway, he was a mathematician who studied the laws of nature. He contributed to algebra. Uh, you can thank him because we're not using Roman numerals to add with. Uh, it was because of Mr. Fibonacci. He found uh, the golden series, the golden Fibonacci sequence, which is 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 plus the previous number 2 equals 5, pi plus the previous number 3 equals 8, and so on. And he was looking at a seashell one day, and uh, he noticed that uh, when he looked at a Nautilus, it's pretty interesting that there's a lot of design in here. And that design was based on Fibonacci values. The center was uh, where it is, and then we had uh, 0.382 of the total. Then we had a 0.50 of the total. This one over here was 0.618 of the total. This one was 100% of the total. And when you went all the way out to this side, it was 127% of the total, okay, which matched the Fibonacci sequence, okay. Uh, I'm going to give you an example here as a hurricane, okay? The eye of the hurricane is obviously zero, but the first major ring out is at 382. The second one is at, five, at 0 0.50 or 500. Uh, the third one out is at 618. Then we go all the way out to 100%. And then the final one is on 127, and that's a Fibonacci sequence. <coughs> Now, so some other examples of fib numbers are butterflies fly in a fib pattern. Okay, it's built into their DNA. They bounce up and down based on the 61850 to 382 all the way to the 127 fib. If you throw a rock in the water, it will produce ripples in the above pattern. NASA used these numbers to slingshot the early space, space explorations around the world to outer space when we were dealing with the mercury capsules, you know, years and years ago. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that's really weird. It's just the way it is. Now, your own body is built on a Fibonacci sequence, okay? So you've got a head and a foot of your body, okay? But... Your chest is at 0.382, your waist is at 0.50, and your knee is at 618. If that doesn't happen, you can't walk. So it's in virtually everything we have. And because traders are uh, human beings, they naturally gravitate to a um, Fibonacci sequence, okay? So it's a natural phenomenon in nature. And uh, in trading, it looks just like this, okay? So here I've got a move going down here like this. And if I simply click here on the high and the low, or the foot and the head of that previous move, I'm going to get some numbers that look like this. This puts the Fibonacci values, or the fibs as we call them, for re uh, using the retracement key. All right? And you can see that they're there. All right? Now, this is a typical move for a, for a currency. It pushes uh, down through the Fibonacci's, okay? And uh, when it finds the, you know, where it's exhausted itself, it then retraces back up to the 50% or the 500 fib. At that point in time, that's basically a 50% discount of the whole move. And so everybody's now interested in coming back in and selling it again. And the move usually continues on down. Uh, something else that you should be interested in here is that this run up on the top almost always equals the same amount of run from the bottom, starting at where the retracement is. Okay, So that will give you a hint as far as how far the currency might move. Just measure the first move, the first pulse, uh, and then add that from wherever the retracement goes up to, and you'll find where the bottom is probably going to be. Okay, That's because math, uh, big boys, the bankers, the hedge fund guys, those kind of guys, they're all mathematicians. So they like to use the math, and they like things to be equal. Right. Now, these fibs can be used as targets because the past really does repeat itself. Now, you want to do these on a 240-minute chart or higher. Sometimes you have to go to a day, sometimes even a week chart to find them. Okay. Now, just remember this. It is a past move in a like price area that the big boys will use for their targets. Okay. So when you're looking for targets in the future, you've got to go to the past in the same price area, and you find an up and down move, a very defined move with a head and a foot, so that you can click on it and get these values. 
All right, so the Fibonacci retracement key is right up in there, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the head and the foot of this move. And the purpose is to find the targets that this movement, as it comes down, it's already had this big move. Where will this go as it comes down, okay? So when we click that, we're going to get these fibs, okay? Now, each one of these fibs is a potential target for the big boys as they trade down. Okay, so the cool thing about this is we know about them in the future. We use the past to tell us the future. Okay, so that's what you get of these values when you click on a Fibonacci retracement key. All right. So here's a move that's a very move showing you what happened, okay? You can see that the first move stopped at the first fib. And then the second move stopped, hesitated. You know, I'm on a 240 chart, so there are one, two, three candles there. So for, you know, 12 hours, it's, it just stood right there at that 618 fib. And then it went on and continued on down to the next one. You can see that right there, okay? So... How does it look down on a chart that we can trade, okay? Once you know the targets on a big 240 chart, when you go down to a chart that you can trade at the 5, the 10, the 15-minute level, that kind of range, uh, they become very valuable targets for you, okay? So here's, a, here's this run, same run here that we're just looking at here. All right, so this is the first fib. I'm down on a 15-minute chart. And uh, that was the first target, and you can see that the currency moved right down to it and stopped at that tar at that target. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what these little arrows and painted candles are, they are uh, sell signals from the Proact Traders charts telling you to go ahead, that these are safe trades uh, down to to that line. But the main thing is that we now have a target. It's really great to have an entry like that that tells you to get an arrow and a painted candle telling you you need to sell this thing. But uh, where is it going? It's going to that fit. Okay. Now the move continues, and you can see the third fib, the second fib target right here. Once again, uh, you know we got great trades down to it, but look where it stopped, right at the fib. That's because the big boys all know where that line is. Okay. Now here's the third one at the 50%, and once again you see that the currency moved right down and actually moved through it, and then moved right back up and just kind of bounced around, you know, 30 pips on either side of that fib for a couple of hours. Okay. And then, that was the third FIB target. And then we finally have the fourth FIB target down here. And, uh, and it goes ahead and takes that one out. And you see that's where the main reversal comes right after it takes that last FIB out. And we have a very strong pullback uh, underway. Now, let's uh, just out of grins, let me just show you what uh, happens if you use the ProAct Traders HSI tool, okay, which is uh, actually far more accurate than the, the uh, FIBs are. But most charts don't, and in fact, no charts have an HSI tool except for ProAct Traders. So you have to, if you're not going to use our charts, then you have to use the uh, FIBs. But, you know, they both work. So uh, so I put the HSI here. I just started at the top and just clicked it and told it I was a seller. And it puts these supports uh, based on historical moves, Fibonacci values, and some previous support and resistance, and it puts these targets on here. All right, so now you can see that when the currency went it ran right down to the fourth support and stopped right there. Okay, then we the next move after we get a pullback back up, then we get another trade down to the fifth support. Okay, then it decides to continue on and continues on down to the sixth support. Then we get a screamer all the way back up again. Okay, and then as it makes its first pulse to go again, right back down to the S4. It bounces around again, and then we get another screamer down here to the S4 one more time, and then finally it gets ready to go. And we get a great trade signal right there. And our, there's our next target hit. It goes down to this target and this one. It almost makes it to the target, but it doesn't quite make it. Okay. Now, that little move right there was about uh, 750 pips. Okay. So just to give you an example of uh, how many pips that was. And, you know, your job is to try to stay in and take all 750 pips. Not click the, the your trade out for five to eight pips. Stay in for the targets. That obviously means you have to know where they are. Now, larger compression charts are stronger fibs than smaller ones. Okay? So, um, here's a fib run right here. We just uh, clicked it on there. And you can see by clicking on that head and that foot right there, okay, uh, we, um, we know 
uh, where the targets are if it heads on down. Okay, and you can see obviously that up they go. They know exactly where these lines are. See how that is? See where well, they know where these lines are? That's what's important for you to realize. Now, if we're, if we're going to continue on down here at this last candle here, that would be our next target where that last little zero is right there. If we break that one, then we're headed down to this one right here. Okay. Here's another move, okay? So here we got a head and a foot, okay? So that gives us those fib values right there. And you can see that the 60-minute 382 fib is the same as that 786 fib, okay? So on the previous slide, I was uh, I was up on a 240 chart, but now I've taken it down to a 60-minute uh, chart, and I've popped the fibs on this move. And you can see that this line holds special value to the to the big boys, okay? Because it's used twice. It's used over here as we used it off the 240 chart at the left, and then the fibs that are currently working, this is the 60-minute, 50-minute fib, and you can see how that line was very important to them, right there, see? Now watch, you see how many times they stopped on this line? See, they know exactly where that line is, all right? And that's what's important. Those are called overlapping fibs. That means when you click on a head and a foot of a larger chart, and then you go down to a smaller one, and you click on a head and a foot of a run there, and you get the same numeric values lining up, then you can be sure that that's a number that every big boy in the world knows what, what it is, okay? So you can notice how the market returned to that strong fib and then moved down to the next fib immediately, see? So once you know the targets for the movements, when would you enter? Well, when you get a clear signal on your trade chart, okay, in the case of ProAct traders, they turn color in the direction of the trend of today. Now, FIBs are also the key to trading a sideways movement, which, by the way, is 70% of the time. And the bigger the spread between those Fibonacci values, the more profit potential there actually is. All right. So here we have what we call a sideways or a choppy market. Now I've marked the two fibs for you so you can see it here. And you can see how it goes up, up to that one, back down, up to that one, back down, up to that one, and back down. See? And all they're doing is moving inside those Fibonacci values from a big chart. Okay? So watch how the market moves to the fibs in a sideways market. All right? So here we go. I put those fibs on. We have the big fibs from the from the uh, the prior one. Those are the dotted lines there. And now we got the fibs from this little small move, clicking from here down to here. All right. So now you can see how they know exactly where these lines are. You see that? These are numerical values that every banker knows and sees. See that? How the movements go up to them, down to them, up to them, down to them, up to them, down to them, down to them, down to them, etc., etc. Okay, so as long as you know where the next fib is, you can trade to it if you have enough profit to pay the broker and still net pips, and you do not violate your margin management rules. Okay, and by the way, margin management means that you need to have a one-to-one -one ratio minimum. So if it's 35 pips to the next fib, then you cannot have a bigger stop than 35 pips on that. It's great, great to have a smaller stop, but the biggest you could put on that would be a 35 pip stop because your target is 35 pips away, which means you've got to stay within a one-to-one -one ratio. All right. Now, always be aware what the dominant trend is so that you can maximize a movement if it breaks out of the sideways movement. We talked about that in an earlier tutorial on finding the trends. If the market is going sideways, look at how you went into that sideways market. If you went into it going down, then the probability is higher that you will, you will break out of there going down. So in that case, you'd want to be trading the, uh, at the top of the FIB move down as opposed to the bottom up. Okay. That way, if you're in the trade, when it finally breaks out, you're going to pick up an additional 50, 60, 100 pips that way. Make sure that you read this disclaimer. It's very important. And uh, we hope you uh, will join us on a call. Uh, ProAct Traders does two free uh, um, lessons every week, every Tuesday night and every Thursday night. And biweekly, we do an advanced class. So uh, please uh, take a look at us at ProActTraders.com.